Ready or not, the Hoosiers are diving headfirst into Big Ten play on Saturday with a trip to Maryland. You are Locked On Hoosiers, your daily podcast on the Indiana Hoosiers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy Friday, everybody. You are Locked On Hoosiers, the one and only daily IU podcast. We're part of the Locked On Network, your team every day. Appreciate you guys making us your first listen, wherever that may be from, YouTube, Spotify, iTunes, anywhere in between. Hoosiers diving headfirst, ready or not, and probably more the latter, into Big Ten play this weekend. Their first true road game of the season as they head to Maryland to take on the Terrapins. Let's get you everything you need to know about this contest. Hoosiers versus Maryland, 3.30 p.m. on Saturday at SECU Stadium. I don't know if it's an abbreviation. I don't know if it's pronounced Seku Stadium. It's in College Park. That's what is the important part. It'll be on Big Ten Network. Maryland comes into this game unbeaten, 4-0. Every day is we'll listen to Thursday's episode uh, with Trey Moore to hear us break down Maryland, Indiana, do that crossover preview. So you got a little bit of a sense about what Maryland has been up to this season, but impressive is probably the best uh, single word to use. They're 4-0 coming off a, a big win against Michigan State. Obviously, Michigan State is a bit of a mess right now, but Win 31-9 there. Every game that the Terrapins have played this season has had them win by at least 18 points. Now, it's not been a particularly tough schedule. Towson, Charlotte, Virginia, and Michigan State is a very favorable first four games of the season. But Maryland's looked the part. They've looked like a, a, a really good team, and the Hoosiers aren't some notable jump up in competition either, and, they, and they'll remain at home. Winning at Michigan State and playing the Hoosiers at home probably roughly on the same level right now, so I, I don't think this is going to be a situation where Indiana necessarily surprises them. Maybe in a, a different timeline where they didn't just come off a putrid showing against Akron, you could make that argument, but it's really hard to make that after whatever that four overtime game was. So Maryland heads in 4-0, looking like one of the best teams in the Big Ten. Obviously, that comes with the caveat of being in the Big Ten East, and they're certainly not going to win the division, but they can play spoiler maybe a little bit this season. We'll see what they'll be able to do. Maybe a little bit of a trap game. Ohio State on the road. Uh, the week after, next weekend, October 7th. I don't know that they'll be overlooking this, but hey, uh, any advantage you can kind of look for, the Hoosiers need and would take in this one. All time, Indiana leads this series 7-4, to four, though they have not won the last two games. I mentioned it on Thursday's episode that basically all these games are exciting. Last year, 38-33 final, uh, the Terrapins win in Bloomington. It was a game the Hoosiers led in the fourth quarter, 27-24, uh, right at the start of the quarter. A game the Hoosiers played well in. It was a game Tua, I believe, got or Tua Lea, excuse me, got hurt in. But ultimately a game that Indiana had a chance and let it slip away, which they did often last season. Bazelak threw for uh, just shy of 300 yards with three touchdowns, but a couple of interceptions threw touchdowns to Cam Camper and Aaron Steinfeld. Uh, Emory Simmons had six catches for 199 yards. But uh, Indiana didn't have any sort of a run game. It is bad looking at this. Indiana ran the ball 30 times, 32 times for 36 yards woeful woeful i don't know how much better it'll be on saturday the last win the hoosiers had over maryland was kind of a program altering game 
It was a 27-11 to win in 2020. It was the game that Michael Penix got injured, blew out his knee, and the rest is kind of history there. Again, every dayers, if you guys didn't listen to the episode we did maybe last week, it's in the it's in the title. You'll be able to see it. See it. Michael Penix talked about that injury, the recovery from it in the 2021 season. It's really interesting. I would advise you to at least go listen to that part. But he suffered that injury against Maryland. Indiana went on to win the game and finished the season admirably. But nothing was really the same after that. Tim Baldwin had 16 carries for 106 yards. Stevie Scott had 24 for 80 and three touchdowns in that contest. And Anna just didn't really throw the ball after Penix uh, left. They just kind of beat up Maryland on the ground and won uh, pretty convincingly. Convincingly is what uh, FanDuel thinks the Terrapins are going to do against Indiana in this one. Favor the... Terrapins by 14 and a half points. Money line of plus 450 for the Hoosiers over under a 50 and a half. If I'm a betting man, occasionally I partake. I think I'm taking Maryland in this one. I don't feel great about Indiana. Maryland has looked the part so far this season. So I think I would take Maryland in this one. I don't feel good about it, and neither does SP Plus, who has Maryland by 21.2 points, 89% win probability, 35-14 projected score. So hedge on your happiness is one of my favorite philosophies to bet on. Uh, bet on Maryland to cover the spread and or maybe just simply win outright and if the opposite happens, that probably means a good day for the Hoosiers. And you are happy at the very least. How much money are you willing to bet on your happiness? It's not a great philosophy, but it works a lot with IU football. How much am I willing to bet to be happy that IU beat whoever it may be? Typically, it's a lot of money. I, I, <laughs> I'm way too invested in IU football, uh, but... They've also made me a lot of money because of that process. I, I don't have a great feeling about this game. I would take uh, Maryland minus 14 and a half. I don't know about the over under. Probably would lean to the over. I don't have a better, a much better feeling about that. But uh, SP plus has Maryland covering, but hitting the under. You can parlay those together over at FanDuel as well if you really want to uh, make some money. What are some of the storylines, the matchups to watch heading into this one? I have three of them picked out for you. We'll dive into each of those here in just a moment. Let's talk about one of today's sponsors first. Did you know that 80% of men will experience hair thinning in their lifetime? It's normal, but it doesn't have to be your fate. You can get ahead of thinning with Nutrafol. Nutrafol is the number one dermatologist recommended hair growth supplement, clinically shown to improve your hair growth visible thickness, and visible scalp coverage. Go to Nutrafol.com slash men to take their health wellness quiz, identify causes of your thinning hair, and Nutrafol will give you a personalized plan for better health through whole body wellness. And it works. In a clinical study, 84% of men showed improvements in their hair after six months taking Nutrafol's hair growth supplements. Take the first step to visibly thicker, healthier hair, for a limited time, Nutrafol is offering our listeners $10 off your first month subscription and free shipping when you go to Nutrafol.com slash men and enter promo code Locked On College. Find out why over 4,000 professionals recommend Nutrafol for healthier hair. Nutrafol.com slash men, spelled Nutrafol.com slash men, and enter the promo code Locked On College, all one word. Again, Nutrafol.com slash men, promo code locked on college. If you guys are catching us on Friday morning, make sure you check out the Locked On College Football Live kickoff show on Fridays, every Friday, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. If you miss it, if you listen to this late, good news. They're on every Locked On College YouTube channel. 
You can make that your second listen today. They talk playoff implications, conference rivalry games, all the insight and analysis you can only get on the Locked On Network. It's 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. every Friday. Locked On College Football Kickoff Live. You don't want to miss it. Let's talk about some storylines to watch in this one. First one might be a little bit obvious. Simply limiting to Aaliyah. Uh, I've been a, a big fan of his for a while, and I think he is a very talented um, quarterback. And he's really showing it this season. And it, it was maybe a little hit and miss at times in his tenure in uh, with the Terrapins. But I think over the last two seasons, he's really showed it. And he's doing it again this year. Last three seasons, really. But uh, I thought he's really taken steps forward in these last two seasons. This year, he's looked the part. Hun- or 1,112 passing yards, eight touchdowns, three interceptions. Two of those came against Charlotte, one last week. IU has a ball-hawking secondary that it's going to be an interesting test for them because they – have been good, but Tualia is another step up in anybody they have faced this season, Kyle McCord included. So I think that this is going to be an interesting test for them and seeing what they might be able to do and if they can hang with the kind of top-tier quarterbacks in the conference this season. I think another thing you're going to have to watch, Tualia has the ability ability to get out of the pocket and so I think that's really going to be something on the the scouting report is that the Hoosiers struggle to maintain contain on defense it's something that I think the Indiana is going to have worked on this season or excuse me this week heading into this game but until they prove it in a game I wouldn't be surprised if there might be some naked bootlegs or some broken plays that turn into big uh, rushing gains for opponents. And Tuali is capable of doing that. He had 37 yards rushing uh, last week in the uh, opening week game against Towson. He had 28 yards, touchdown in each of those. So he's someone that can make Indiana pay if they lose contain. And they did it a couple times against Akron last week. They did it against Louisville. It's an issue that they're going to have to address. So limiting to Aaliyah through the air on the ground is going to be a big focus. It's not going to be easy. He's one of the best quarterbacks in the conference for a reason. Fast start. We heard Trey on Thursday's episode, talk about how slow starts have plagued Maryland. They fell down 14-0 a couple times this season to open games. Now, obviously, being undefeated, they came back at those. But I believe it was both the Charlotte and Virginia games. They fell behind early. Charlotte and Virginia are a different level down from the Hoosiers. I'm willing to say that much. So I could see a path where Indiana starts fast and then tries to hold on a little bit. If not for the fact that Indiana hasn't exactly been quick starters in their own right, you kind of, I mean, the Indiana State game, I guess it was an FCS school. It's hard to put a lot into that. Outside of that, I don't think Indiana's played particularly great in the first quarter, first halves of games. The Louisville ha- first half was atrocious. The Ohio State game was atrocious. And then the Akron first half, had some moments. The second half I thought was worse, but it would be really nice if Indiana could come out and take advantage of potential slow starts from Maryland and jump ahead early and really put some pressure, some game pressure on the Terrapins as a good team in a conference game, knowing that they uh, need to win that game to, to fulfill some of the goals they have. Now, the kind of catch to that is if they keep coming back in these games, they're going to have some confidence that they're going to be able to do it, but put some pressure on them. Put some real game pressure on them. Get them thinking. Get them worried. 
see what the result is. And so I'd love the Hoosiers to come out, score on their first two drives, go up 14 nothing real quick, and see what the response is going to be from Maryland and the Terrapins, even if they are at home. I think that would be a really interesting scenario for a number of reasons, obviously, but put that game pressure on them. Offensive line. This is has a couple caveats to it, but Maryland's defensive line isn't great. And that was something that Trey pointed out as a weakness for Maryland's defense. I use offensive line has been improved from last season, certainly. Still below average, I think, overall. Maybe even – no, I would say below average. I was going to give them the benefit of the doubt, but no. They've been below average. They've been better at pass blocking than run blocking, though that wasn't great last week either. Again, it would be nice if they came out and took advantage of a team that they might have a bit more of a mismatch against. Maybe not mismatch, but they size up better against them. Now, they had that same advantage, so to speak, against Akron and did not make it pay or did not make it uh, work. This, uh, This offensive line... A lot of this also comes down to play calling. If I use going to continue to want to run the ball as much as it does, the offensive line has to get movement to make that work. If they're going to pass the ball more, I feel better about it, and they've been better about pass blocking, but the the offensive line needs a big game in this one for the Hoosiers to have a chance to win this, and not just in terms of keeping Taven off the ground and sack free but run blocking as well, which is somewhere that they've really struggled this season. So that's a lot of big matchups, big storylines to follow, big asks of the Hoosiers, and that's why it's a 14.5-point spread and a 21-point difference on SP+. It's possible if 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 the Hoosiers are going to keep this close, it's going to look something like we've seen in – recent years and even last season where they might have a lead heading into the fourth quarter and then blow the opportunities. I'm tired of moral victories. Get actual ones, get actual wins and, and make us feel a little bit better about this. I don't know that we're going to feel great about uh, the Hoosiers coming out of this contest. I have an update on the show that pretty big update that going to share with you guys here in just a moment. eBay Motors, though, is a sponsor we've had for quite a while. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors helps ev- has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your number one ride or die alive ebay.com slash motors ebay guaranteed fit only available to u.s customers eligible items only exclusions do apply so a little show update actually a pretty big show update if uh if we're being honest today is my last day hosting locked on hoosiers Uh, I didn't want to tease anything, didn't want to make a big deal about it, but I did want to give you guys an update because this is the last time you're going to hear me on this show. Um, It's a good reason why. I I wasn't fired. I wasn't let go. There there was nothing like that. It was my decision to to walk away, but it uh, it was a bittersweet one because this has been something that I created and you guys have been a part of a little over two years ago i messaged whatever the equivalent of a cold call is but for an email i did that to locked on asked about a locked on hoosier show and why they didn't have it and could i host it 
And eventually that got the wheels turning and I was brought on uh, two years and a month ago. So 25 months ago, I was brought on and built this from scratch. And you guys have been there along the way. I know I say it all the time, thanking you guys for the support. I try to make it sound sincere because it is sincere. We started with nothing. There was nothing here. And you guys have come in along the way, however it may have been, through YouTube, through Twitter, through recommendation. And if any of you recommended me, recommended this show to a friend, I, I thank you guys immensely because that's how we grew. That's how we got it to where the show is now. And it's been a blast. There's a, a, a number of people uh, that I that deserve thanks for this. David Locke, obviously the, I mean, locked on is his brainchild, and so appreciate him just for having this network. Ross Jackson's the one that that brought me on uh, early doors and helped me when I mean these episodes were pretty rough at the beginning of of Locked On Hoosiers. If any of you are around from back then, you know these episodes were pretty pretty rough, uh, but in the last probably year and a half or so, Zach Blackerby, host of Locked on Auburn. You guys might have run across his stuff. He was on here at one point to talk about Sean Shivers last year. Uh, he's been an immense help as well. And I don't know that any of these guys are going to listen to this, but I wanted to thank them. They deserve some public recognition. And uh, they they really helped me in a number of ways along the way to, to create this, turn this into what it is. It's a... It's, it's become a, much bigger than I think I ever could have imagined it to be. And I took a, a special joy in watching it grow because, again, th there was nothing here when we started this. So uh, that's why I always felt an immense amount of appreciation for all of you that do listen to this because... I mean, you came here because of because of me, for better and for worse. And so I thank you guys for that. I thank all the hosts we have had along the way. There's been tons and tons of them. Jared Gossoul, uh was on here a lot throughout the years, a, a good friend of mine. Uh, Sabrina Merchant was on here a number of times talking IU women's basketball. Wyatt Crozier was on here talking uh, Big Ten women's basketball. There were a lot of people. I, I, I probably shouldn't start naming people because there will be ones I forget. But there's a lot of people that came through and, and helped provide insight. And I thank any of them uh, that stopped by, uh, even for even if it was just an episode, just a segment, any of that. Uh, appreciate them greatly. So as I said, it's it's good reason why I'm leaving. I can't reveal it just yet. Uh, but it doesn't make this any less bittersweet. There will be somebody coming on to take the show over. I don't know how quickly um, that they will take it over. To be frank, all I know is that their name is also Jacob. So maybe that makes the transition a little bit easier. But I thank you guys again. I say it a lot. I've said it a couple times here. Um, you guys are the reason the show became as big as it was. And I, I am forever grateful to you for that. If you guys want to keep up with me, uh, I'm on Twitter over at uh, Twitter X, whatever you want to call it. It's just at Jacob Rude. Simple as that. I'll be announcing in a handful of days, maybe a week or so, uh, what I'll be doing next. But again, guys, thank you for being part of this ride. Uh, even if you were a small part of it, even if this is your first episode, you were part of this ride, and I thank you for it. Keep listening to Locked on Hoosiers. It'll still be here. There'll still be someone doing it, and show them the support that you showed me because uh, it sure was awesome along the way and really helpful, really supportive, and really made this whole – project a, a really enjoyable one so thank you guys um i'll be forever grateful for the support you guys showed me for one last time as always guys i hope you have a terrific friday 
Go Hoosiers and LEO.